When I first started with WordPress, this is what my files, images, and documents looked like when I published them on my website. The text links look terrible, and there's no system of organization, nor is there a way to search or filter for certain files when you need them. Frankly, if you're running a site that's home to lots of documents, then you need a better system than this. Now compare that to how organized this table layout is. There's a search bar, filtering options, and pagination, which keeps everything from getting too cluttered. There's also this tile layout, great for image-based files or PDFs, and my personal favorite of the two. Or how about this folder system, which you can apply to both layouts, making it even nicer to navigate through, similar to how you would organize files on your computer. So in this video, I'll first show you how to add these file sharing layouts to your website. Then I'll share three tips that I use to keep my files organized and easy for anyone else to find. So let's get started. This whole system only requires one plugin for your website, which is made by the fantastic team here at Barn2. It's called Document Library Pro, and ever since it was launched in 2021, it's been one of our best-selling plugins of all time. And that's due to its popularity amongst all kinds of different website managers. You can use it for corporate documents, such as company handbooks, datasets, and documentation. It's also ideal for personal documents, like leisure guides or recipes. And it's an excellent tool for creating an audio or video library for things like podcasts and YouTube playlists. As a premium plugin, you do need to purchase it to be able to use it on your own website. Or you can visit our website and launch an admin demo so you can test it out on a temporary site. In either case, use the first link below in the description. And if you decide to buy it, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. After purchasing your copy, you'll get an email with the zip file and a product key for activation. In the WordPress admin, go to Plugins, Add New Plugin, and upload the plugin zip file that you just downloaded. Click Install, and then Activate. This will launch the Setup Wizard, and on the first page, paste your license key here and click Activate. Step two is where you'll choose a layout. For smaller libraries, the grid layout would work well, as it displays each document more prominently. For everyone else, the table layout provides a better user experience when searching through the library. You can also enable folders to create this tiered structure. This is something that you can add later as it does require proper categorization of your documents in order to work properly. And that's something I'll get into later on. Next, we need to define the table columns. There are a lot to choose from, which you can read about with this link here. But honestly, the default setup is already good. But you do need to decide how users can access the documents. This can be with a link, checkboxes, or both. And lazy load is something I'd recommend for big libraries with at least a few hundred items, as it will help with website performance. I'll discuss filters a bit later on, so skip this for now. And at the end of the setup wizard, let's click the link to create our first document. Now, there are four main ways that you can add documents to your library. But to save us some time, I'm just going to cover a few of them. If you want to see a more detailed overview of how to set up everything with this plugin, then check out the entire tutorial I made linked up here in the cards. Option one is to add files manually via Documents, Add New, which is the screen we're on now. In this case, you'll add the document title. You'll also add the contents of the document as if you were writing a WordPress post. And then you can write an excerpt, which is just a summary of what the document is. And then come over here and make sure you choose a file or URL if that's necessary for this document. You can also specify the file size. And then you can choose a document category. And the more specific here you are, the better. You can also write some tags. And the author is another field that you can fill in if you want to. Finally, you can set a featured image, which will help with finding the document later on. Then just like a WordPress post, you'll click on publish and your new document will be saved in your library. 
If, however, you already have files in your media library that you want to convert into documents, then click on this list view, and you can use the bulk actions, selecting as many of these as you want, and then the drop down to add to document library, and then click apply. However, I've already added these items to my library, so I'm not going to do it again in this case. Now go to documents and click on all documents. And this will give you an entire list of all of the different files that you've converted into documents. One other thing I want to mention is how to create new categories. And it's just like creating categories in WordPress. You go to documents and click on categories. And then you can write the name and slug for your category and click add new. Or if you are in the listing for a document and you're editing it, you can also add a new category with this button here. And then you can add the document to it once it's in the list. And tags are basically the exact same process. There's a page for them here, or you can add them to each document using this box on the right hand side. Make sure you be as specific as you can and either use bulk actions to edit a bunch of documents at once, or go through them one by one and add categories and tags, as well as the document author if necessary. All of these details will help to make your files easier to sort, order, and find later on. So very soon I'll show you what the document library looks like on the front end of the site once we've created these different settings. But now I want to go through three organization tips that'll help you keep everything in line and make these documents much easier to find. My first tip for you is to make use of the categories and tags, and I'll explain how to use each of them because they are distinct from each other and should be used in different ways. Use categories in the same way that you would use folders on your computer and use tags to link common themes between documents in different categories. For example, a category could be meeting notes. A subcategory could denote the year or quarter for those meetings, but a tag could be budget, policy, or announcements. And it's not necessarily related to meetings or the quarter. So just to give you another example, you can see that this sales forecast document is in the category of policies and sales with the tag analysis, because it's the type of document that it is. It's an analysis document, but it belongs with policies and other sales documents. My next tip for you is if you're using specific dates in the names of files, you should start using the year, month, day format, which is popular in Japan and Hungary as far as I'm aware. Although this is the reverse of the normal format, you'll see why this makes a lot of sense in just a second. When I used to name my different files by their date, I would begin with the day, then the month, and then the year. But this quickly becomes very messy when organizing documents by name. The day first approach practically randomizes the resulting list of documents, and it's far less useful than a more predictable year first method. And my third tip for you is to make use of the plugins search and filter options so visitors can find your documents in a much faster and easier way. So first up, let's enable the search bar. Go to the plugin settings page under documents and settings and scroll all the way down to the search section here. And you can see the search box is enabled with this checkbox. And you can also enable the reset button so people can reset their search and just show the library without the search results. Then scroll down to the bottom and click on save changes. Now you also have the option to use a short code to enable the search box. And by doing this, you can also define a different position for it, as it will default to the top if you don't specify anything. You can read more about the search box short code option in our knowledge base, and I've linked it below. Then scroll back to the top of settings and click on document tables. And if you're using the table layout for your documents, then you can enable filters as well. Scroll down to the bottom here and change it from disabled to show based on columns in the table or custom. If you choose to show based on the columns in the table, it'll take filters from a set list of different column tables that are available. This includes categories, tags, author, and the file type. 
But if you want to be more specific or show some different filters, like custom taxonomies, for example, then you'll need to use the custom option. And in that case, you write this sort of short code with doc underscore categories, for example, and then write a comma and then doc underscore tags. And the last one is file type, which can be useful as well. You can also list custom taxonomies as filters by using this shortcode format tax colon taxonomy name. So whatever the taxonomy name is would come after this tax section. But I'll click on save changes with that. And here we have our category tag and file type filters enabled. If you want to read more about adding filters, the information is in our knowledge base, which is linked below. And now it's time for the fun bit, seeing your WordPress document library for the first time. Go to the pages section of the WordPress admin. And when you install document library pro, it automatically created a main document library page for you. This page lists all of your documents beautifully on the front end of your website. You can rename it to anything else if you'd like, and then click on view. So here we can see our document library, just like in the beginning of the video, with the search bar enabled and the categories and tag filters enabled. Remember to play around with the different layout options. For example, if you go back to settings, you can enable folders, no matter if you have a table or grid view enabled. And again, this is one of the best ways to lay it out in a way that's very natural and similar to how you would experience folders on your computer. So make sure you're happy with everything. And if you want to create more complex table layouts, or you want to create multiple different tables and spread them across your website on different pages, then I highly advise reading the knowledge base using the links below in the description. Or if you're more of a visual learner, then I think you'd prefer to watch this video, which explains everything in detail. And if you're finally ready to test it out, I put a handy link for you here. So don't be shy. And of course, thanks for watching.